Let's do a simple MPI demo. If I do a directory listing on this folder, Bayocat, I've already transferred in a sample-mpi.c and a sample-mpi.qsub. Both of these files are available in links below the video. If you take a look in sample-mpi.c, I cat that, which essentially gives you, it gives you the contents of the file, you can see that it is a C file with a main and a few MPI niceties. If you see we do it include MPI.h, it does an MPI init, an MPI com rank, it also does a get host name. Once it does all these things, it can do a printf for hello world from some process number and a particular host name. Because of the way MPI works, MPI can run applications on multiple computers at the same time. To compile an MPI application on Bayocat, you do an MPI CC, give it a dash O, you give it a name, sample dash MPI in this case, and you give it a dot C file, sample dot MPI dot C. We do another directory listing, we see that new file has shown up. It's a sample dash MPI. I can simply run that right here, sample dash MPI, and it says hello world from process zero on Minerva. Process zero just happens to be the very first processor that gets started up. And because we didn't tell it how many processors we need, it just creates one. And Minerva is the host name of the box this is currently running on. This is the head node. Because it's the head node, we don't want to do any real work here. We just want to do light preparation work for jobs. If we want to be sure this does work under MPI, we can do an MPI run dash n, we give it a number of cores that we want it to run on, and then we give it sample that and tell it to run. And now you see we have hello world from process 0 on Minerva, then we have process 1, then we have process 3, and process 2. Well, why did process 3 show up before process 2? MPI doesn't actually control what order the processes start up in. They can start up in any order. And in this case, 3 started up before 2. If we run it again, it can be entirely different. We have 0, 1, 3, 2 again. Let's, let's try it again. Then we have 2, 1, 3, 0. Because the head node is for preparation work, we don't actually want to run any real work here. I will now show you how to submit this job on the Bayocat. We take a look at the other file that I, that I transferred earlier. We have the sample-mpi.qsub file. If you take a look at that first line, it is a hash bang line, or shebang. It tells it what shell to run this as. That line tells, it, it tells SGE, Unix applications, that this is a script and that it needs to be run with an interpreter. That interpreter in this case is bash. Other good ones are TCSH, ZSH, Python, Perl, and SH. If you take a look here, we have hash dollar sign lines. Hash dollar sign lines tell QSub that it needs to do something special with the rest of that line. In this case, we have a dash L following. This dash L tells QSub that we have a resource request. We need a certain resource. Then we have this mem equals 1G. Well, that's telling it that we need one gigabyte of memory. We also have this other hash dollar sign line with another dash L means we need another resource. In this case, we need h underscore rt. h underscore rt is the runtime of the job. In this case, I said we need to run for about 15 minutes. You can specify any length of time, but you need to specify a time. If you do not, it defaults to one hour, and many people don't expect that. And so they will come to me and ask me why their job stopped before it finished. It didn't, it didn't give me my output. Well, in general, that's because it didn't finish running, because it got killed because it ran longer than one hour. This third hash dollar sign line has a dash PE argument. That tells, S that tells SGE and QSub that this needs to run in a parallel environment. It needs to use more than one processor. In this case, I said it needs to run in the MPI fill parallel environment. Eight tells it that you need eight processors. This fourth 
hash dollar sign line just says dash CWD. That tells SGE and QSUB that it needs to uh, start up the job in whatever directory we are currently in. In this case, I'm in my home directory in a slash Bayocat directory. Now, if you take a look through the rest of the script, it does something very, it, it does some interesting things. There's this echo n starting, starting the job at date. Well, that right there tells, uh, uh, is just a couple of commands, and I can run them right here. And it says starting the job at Saturday, August 18th, 2.12. That's going to come out, that's going to show up in your output file. <clears throat> it's useful sometimes to know when a particular command started, when this portion of the job started. So we now know we've started this job here. The next line here is mpi run dot, uh, dot slash sample dash mpi. The interesting thing here is I didn't have to tell MPI how many processors to run. When it's done under SGE, it automatically reads that in from the, from, from the job environment and determines, hey, I have access to eight processors. Okay, well, I'm going to fire up eight processors. The eight processors came from this dash PE line, if you remember. And then once that is done, it will then do an echo dash N saying we're ending the job at a particular date and time. Okay, now that, we know, now that we know what that command does, let's take another look. I can do something simple like qsub sample-mpi.qsub. That will take that script and submit it to the job, or submit it to the scheduler. If you see this line output here, it says your job, and it gives you a job number. It also gives you a job name, which is the name of the script has been submitted. Well, now that we know we've got a job number, let's do a qstat and let's look at that job. qstat-j. Okay. Now, that gave us a lot, a lot, a lot of output. The interesting thing here is that it is here and It has not started yet. It should start very soon. Oh, I do another qstat-j. It doesn't exist anymore. Well, that's because the job is already run. But well, what if we want some information about that job after, after the fact? You do a qaccount-j and give it that job number again. And it will give us an output telling us how long it took to run, where it ran, and all that kind of stuff. So we have a q sub time of 2.13.58. It started at 2.14.08 and finished two seconds after it started. It also ran on road 11, which is good to know. So now we ran that job. I could do an ls and do it, get a directory listing. If you'll see, new files showed up. We have this sample-mpi.qsub.e and then your job number, and a dot .o in your job number, and a dot .pe and a .po in their job number. Well, some of those are extraneous and don't really mean much for you. You can remove, in general, you can remove the .pe and .po files. So in this case, I will just to clean things up. Okay, do another directory listing and we see your, your .o files. Let's just take a look at that .o file for you. And you see right here, it ran on Rogue 11. We say hello world from process 0, 5, 6, 1, 4, 7, 2, 3. All of those, as you can see, are still out of order. It started the job on August 18th at 2.14. It finished the job at, on August 18th at 2.14, just two seconds after it started. Okay, well now that we know that it ran, were there any errors? This .o file is just output. A .e file will be errors, and we cat that file, and there are no errors. So it doesn't really, there weren't any problems with the job. Okay, that is how you run a simple MPI application on Bayocat.